Li Wei's eyes blazed. I will not fight you, Xingyun. Please, go. I shook my head. I would not abandon him to certain death, not even to save myself. Lady Hualin sighed. Refuse to fight and you'll both be killed. The most romantic end, upholding all your honorable principles, though a reckless waste. A hopeless despair settled over me as I met Li Wei's grim yet resolute gaze. Our hands remained slack by our sides in defiance of her command. We would not be her pawns in this sick game, nor would I go quietly. I would fight until my energy was drained, until our final breaths were spent. Only then could she tear her bloody victory from us. Her tongue clacked against the roof of her mouth. How disappointing. I had hoped for a more spirited entertainment. However, there are ways to ensure your cooperation. Her shield gleamed as she stepped closer to Li Wei, seizing his chin between her fingers, her nails cutting into his skin. He recoiled, horror dawning over his face, yet she held him fast, her soldiers gripping his arms tighter behind his back. Li Wei, I lunged toward him, trying to shove my way through the guards who grabbed me and flung me back. Lady Hualing's pupils glinted as shards of topaz. A recollection emerged. Something Li Wei had told me once of the mind talents, their eyes, which glitter like cut stones. Fear plunged through me, trailed by doubt. I refused to believe it. I dared not. Lady Hualing was of the celestial kingdom, not the demon realm, the cloud wall, or whatever that place was. Once the flower immortal, her talent had to be of earth, not the mind. I had seen it myself with the creeping moss and those monstrous vines. Impossible that she should have know the forbidden arts, and even if she did, surely the emperor would have sealed them from her. But what if the emperor did not know? What if she had disappeared before such magic was banned? Beads of sweat gleamed on Li Wei's skin. Still, Lady Hualing did not release her hold. Could not help recalling that she was one of the most powerful immortals in the realm, and even if Li Wei's magic was not bound, he had been weakened by the battle from the amethyst ring. If she was trying to compel him, she would fail. I tried to assure myself. Li Wei was strong, too. He would not surrender, he would fight. But when Lady Hualing and her guards released him, I no longer knew him. Something vital in him had been lost. My insides shriveled as I stared into his eyes. Worse than a stranger's, they were as cold as his father's. His face was blank as he stood, unmoving, even when a guard shoved a sword into his hand. Someone passed me another, my fingers closing reflexively around its hilt. As Lady Hualing leaned toward me, I gagged as the smell of decaying flowers crowded my nostrils. Do you regret spurning my offer? A final warning. Don't be so foolish as to throw your life away for him. He will not appreciate it. The men of his family have hearts of stone. I did not hesitate, leaping forward to thrust my sword at her. As it crashed against her shield, pain coursed through my arm. I raised it again. Better to go down fighting this way. But the soldiers shoved me aside, another kicking the back of my knees as I slumped to the ground. Lady Hualing crouched down as she brushed an icy knuckle down my cheek. I flinched, rearing away. Don't forget, you still have your powers, she spoke in an intimate whisper. If you let him kill you, well, his life is forfeit regardless. But if he dies, you live. Something splintered inside me, an impossible choice, whether to die in a futile sacrifice or to kill Li Wei to save myself. More than just wanting Li Wei dead, she wanted me to kill him. Did she take a sadistic pleasure in tormenting her enemy's child? Did she relish the thought of me living in misery and regret as she had done? Or was this to prove me wrong? That despite my claim, she and I were not so different after all. That the same viciousness in her heart lurked in mine. Oh, I had baited her too well, and now we both would pay. Lady Hualing clapped, the hollow sound ringing in the cavern. As though I was a signal, Li Wei's body jerked. Then he stopped toward me. With his sword in his hand, he circled me, in a cruel parody of the many times he had challenged me in play. I could not move, unable to look away from his dead gaze. Even now, I did not believe he could harm me, although I myself was almost compelled before it in the eastern sea and had seen what a sliver of such power could do. He charged swift as lightning. Stunned, I threw up my sword, a second too late, and his blade slashed my cheek. Blood trickled from the stinging gash, yet it was nothing to the agony within. 
It was not that he looked at me with hatred, but with utter indifference. Silver flashed hard and bright. My body moved of its own violation, flinging my arm up, our blades clanging together. He bore down relentlessly as I staggered beneath the force of his blow, digging my heels into the ground. In a sudden faint, he whirled to the side. I reeled forward as he swept his sword across the scales of my armor, thrusting it deep into my shoulder. A cold iron sank through my flesh, scraping bone. With a smooth tug of his arm, his blade slid from me with a moist, sucking sound. A gasp was torn from my lungs as I pressed my palm to the gaping wound, blood gushing between my fingers. Anger surged through me now, misplaced though it was. As I lunged at him, my sword pierced his armor, driving it to his side. I yanked it out at once before it went too deep, shame and remorse searing me, along with the horror that he did not even flinch. Our blades clashed again and again. I held back each time, though he showed no such restraint. Yet we were more closely matched than I anticipated. He had been the better swordsman, but I had the benefit of a soldier's training. I was quick. He was strong. My strikes were deft. He was ruthless. Magic would have tipped the scales, except his was bound, and I found myself unwilling to draw my own against him. A slender distinction, but to no use of my powers on him, now felt akin to execution. Unfair, almost. My mind screamed what use was such honor, even as my heart whispered that it was not Li Wei who attacked me so pitilessly, just the husk of his body dancing to another's tomb. He was my opponent, but he was not my enemy, and though I wanted to win, I could not kill him. It was not honor alone which restrained me, but a sense of self-preservation, knowing that slaying the one I loved would destroy me too. I would never recover, not for all eternity, not even if I found my way home. My foot caught on a loose rock and I stumbled. In a flash, the point of his sword pressed against the hollow of my neck. He stilled, a muscle clenching in his cheek. Was he struggling against Lady Hualing's control? I glanced at her, dazzling light pouring from her eyes, her brow coated in a sheen of sweat. Was she tiring? Hope flared in me, only to be extinguished when Li Wei's hand trembled a moment before his sword dipped and drove through my chest. I gasped, my legs buckling as I collapsed onto the stone floor, sinking into a puddle of my still warm blood. Darkness beckoned, a merciful void without the pain blossoming through my body only eclipsed by the agony of knowing that it was he who had done this. A forgotten memory flared. My mother's arms lifting me up from where I had fallen, her thumb brushing the tears from my cheek. On my scraped flesh had stung, my first real injury, until her cool touch and soft murmurs soothed it away. This would not be the end. My eyes flew open. I reached for a precious fragment of my power, sealing my wound. The healers would have cringed at my crude work, at the scar which would remain, but the pain subsided and the bleeding staunched. My mind cleared a little as I staggered to my feet, searching Li Wei's face for the faintest sign of recognition. Yet there was nothing, not a flicker of love, not a speck of remorse. And in the moment, something snapped to place for me. I would not throw my life away. I would not be defeated by myself or another. I would fight to live, and while I lived, there would be hope. To grasp at a chance of our survival, I would risk everything, even our lives. My energy dwindling, I seized what I could, the air shimmering as I hurled my magic at Li Wei. Coils of air wrapped around his body, knocking him to the ground, sealing his ears, nose, mouth, and pressing his eyelids shut, covering every inch of his skin until he could do nothing except lay there, writhing like a trapped beast. If his powers had not been constrained, my binds could never have held him so. Lady Hualing's delighted laugh rang through my ears. Was this not the spectacle she had forced us to perform? Had she dreamed of inflicting such torment on her own faithless lover? Trapped in the cocoon of air I buried him in, Li Wei was paler than snow. I gagged, fighting the urge to release him. Yet I hardened myself. I could not stop now. My power flowed, settling over every pore of his body until he glittered with a thousand silver lights like he was cloaked in stardust. My heart ripped from me and could not have hurt more. Pain had lost all meaning. His struggles weakened until his body went limp, the steady thrum of his aura fading until I could no longer sense it. Only then did I stop. My eyes were dry, though I had wept a river inside. How wretched I was, cracked and ripped and gouged.
yet I refused to shatter. Sinking onto the ground, my fingers sought Liwei's cold hand, pressing our palms together. I'm sorry, a ragged whisper. Forgive me. Loud clapping rang through the cavern, jarring amid my despair. It hit me then, the vile, unspeakable thing I had done. Lady Hualing wanted to hurt those who had wronged her, but I had struck down the one I still loved, in the cold light of victory, where my reasons hollow, glazing my selfish desire to live. My control broke. I fell away from him as though scalded. I did not deserve to touch him. Not after this. Not after what I had done. My arms clasped tight around myself as I retched until my stomach clenched in protest. Sobs ripped from my throat, ugly and raw, echoing through the terrible silence. But it was not over. I could not let this all be in vain. Gathering the remnants of my composure, I staggered to my feet. My bow, I said flatly to Lady Hualing. She inclined her head. I gave you my word, and my offer still stands. The Demon King would be pleased to have you by his side. A good mind, a strong arm, and will. Someone who does what needs to be done when the time calls for it. I flinched from her praise, hoping she would take it for exhaustion rather than revulsion. I had never imagined myself bloodthirsty, that I would have killed her now and rejoiced. Yet she had spoken no lies. My hands were stained with Li Wei's blood. It had been my choice to hurt him. You were right, I said, trying to lull her into a sense of false security. There is no sense in dying for principles alone, and I will consider your offer, only because the celestial kingdom will no longer welcome me after this. When Lady Hualing nodded, a guard thrust the phoenix fire bow at me. As I clutched it, a memory flashed through me, of the first time I had held it in the peach blossom forest, a lifetime ago, when I still had been whole. I turned away, stumbling toward him once more, lifeless and shackled. He was still every inch the regal prince. I prayed our ordeal was almost over. Free him, I pointed at his manacles. The sight of them enraged me past bearing. I would do it myself, except I did not want to rouse her suspicions. Why? she asked. I looked her full in the face. I have done what you wished, though it hurt me greatly. Prince Li Wei should be laid to rest with all ceremony he deserves. I will do him the final service of returning his body to his parents, but I will not bring him fettered like a slave. Besides, do you want this to fall into the hands of the Celestial Kingdom? I gestured to the metal encircling his wrists. When she did not speak, I frowned. Did you not want their Celestial Majesties to know what you did to their son? What you did, you mean? She taunted with exquisite cruelty. It would suit me well if you would delivered his body to them. I only wish I were there to see it. She jerked her head at a soldier who hurried forward. He pressed something against Li Wei's manacles, which fell away, clattering onto the ground. At once, I dragged Li Wei's arm across my shoulder to hold him away. Wait. Lady Hualing drew closer, the amethyst ring glowing on her finger. I must drain his life force as it's fading fast. It will be quicker now without those chains. My breathing quickened. I fought for calm. I would not let her defile him further. As she reached for him, I grasped my energy, bracing for release. But the air warmed, a powerful force hurling Lady Hualing away. She slammed against the stone wall, her shield winking out as bands of fire bound her. I swung around to find Li Wei, staggering to his feet, the tip of his blade trailing from the ground. As three soldiers charged at him, he swung his sword in a wide arc, the blow sending them flying. A guard bolted toward me with a spear outstretched, whom I dispatched with a quick arrow to his chest. I was shaking, my heart ablaze. It had been nothing more than a wild guess, pieced together from the little I knew. In the eastern sea, I had sealed my hearing to fight Governor Renew's compulsion, but his charm was of vo voice alone, and that would not have worked here. Yet the governor had spoken of death being the only release from those caught in the throes of such power. And so, to break Hualing's control over Li Wei, I had sealed off every sense he possessed, bringing him to the brink of death itself. Though if I had failed, he would have died or killed me, and he would have perished for nothing. When I held his hand after, I was, had channeled my energy into him, as much as I could muster without arousing suspicion. I was no healer, and all I could do then was pray it would suffice. I could not have risked his life just to save my own, but I had done it to save us both. 
I had hoped under the guise of death Lady Hualing would let me take him away, and it had almost worked, but I gloated too soon. We were not out of danger yet. Too late did I sense her gathering power. In one strike, Lady Hualing dispelled her binds as vines shot out, coiling around Li Wei and me, squeezing the breath from my chest, strangling my limbs to numbness. Before I could despair, Li Wei's magic ripped across us, burning away the plants. Lady Hualing raised her hands again. The damp scent of earth thickened as air gleamed with her magic. I flung up a barrier as Li Wei threw his might behind mine. I could not fight her alone, yet together we stood a chance. Her energy crackled when it struck, transforming into endless vines which shone with a sinister light as they writhed against our shield. Sweat dripped from my brow as I tried not to imagine what they sought with such ravenous hunger. My struggles were not lost on her. Lady Hualing's red lips curved upward as the crushing pressure on our shield intensified. The tendrils curled with renewed vigor. Time was not on our side. I was close to exhaustion, and Li Wei's strength must be ebbing too. Soon, we would fall, either from fatigue on her malevolent spell or the soldiers closing around us, their faces alight with anticipation. No, I would not relinquish our hard-won lives so easily. A plan formed mad and reckless, yet the faintest glimmer of hope was preferable to the certain death. My eyes met Li Wei's as I mouthed the silent instruction for him to hold the shield steady. He nodded, straining as he bore the full weight of our barrier now. I scraped the shreds of my energy into a glowing ar orb no larger than a marble, flinging it out to strike Li Wei's shield from within. It cracked, though the web of veins held it fast. I clenched my teeth, a hiss of breath escaping my lips. Teacher Dao Ming's stern warning about not draining my power pounded in my head, but I could not stop. My head throbbed as I wrung the final flecks of light from my core and hurled them out in a gust of wind. Our shield shattered, the force fleeing Lady Hualing's vines away, right onto her body. The fleeing soldiers, the ceiling, and the walls, where they clung as though rooted. Cracks streaked through the cavern, the stones groaning and trembling. I crumpled onto the ground, as hollow as a paper lantern trampled by a careless foot. It was shivering, not from the chill in the cave, but from the ice spreading through my limbs. My eyelids were heavy, yearning to shut, to surrender to the darkness spreading through my body. Everything took on a hazy sheen, until I no longer knew whether I was still alive or trapped in an endless dream. Light swirled, golden bright, Miwe's magic flowing into my broken body. They sank into the black yet did not vanish. The like sunlight glinting over the night sky, the light streamed into the core of my life force, buried deep within my head, bringing forth a single fleck of silver, the last of my energy. The cold within me thawed, my strength returning as I woke to find Li Wei's fingers entwined with mine as we lay upon the ground. Lady Hualing's eyes were glassy, her mouth opened in a soundless scream, her body convulsed as the veins coiled around her in a strangling hold. Tighter and tighter they wound, tearing the silk of her dress, squeezing her bulging flesh until it turned crimson and purple. I choked down my bile as I watched her struggles weaken, the camellias at her waist wilt and drooped their once proud heads, the silk peonies on her gown, brown and fray. The light faded from her pupils, the bitterness receding from her face, until just her cold beauty remained. I could have lain there until the moon waxed and waned, unable to summon the strength to rise. But the cavern shuddered with more force than before. Rocks tumbled from above as Li Wei dragged me to my feet, my muscles straining as we raced toward the entrance. A chunk of stone struck my back, knocking me to the ground. Clouds of dust descended as the ceiling fractured, crashing down, just as Li Wei summoned a gale that flung us through the opening, the cave collapsing behind us with a deafening roar. The hard ground offered scant relief to my battered body. I could not move, lying in the dirt as though pinned down. One ragged breath, and then another slipped from my lungs. Li Wei's eyes were open, gazing into mine. As the color returned to his face, my fear receded. He reached out to me then, his palm cupping my cheek, wet with tears that had fallen unnoticed. I smiled, content to feel his warmth. I had no more words. I had said everything in my heart. A luminous glow of the moon cast a spell around the forest. In the pale light, the dead trees gleamed like polished columns of silver and jade. The fog vanished, dispersed by the night wind. Had it been cast by Lady Hualing to hide herself from the world? Leaves rustled, branches crackling. 
we swung around as Princess Feng Mei emerged from the woods. With a joyful cry, she rushed to Li Wei and threw her arms around him. His eyes darted toward me, his hands hesitating before reaching out to hold on to her. I struggled to a sitting position, looking away from their reunion, though their whispers pierced my ears. Finally, Princess Feng Mei touched my arm. I hid where you told me to, until I heard a loud crash. She scrutinized me. She pressed a fist to her mouth. Are you all right? I must have been a fearsome sight, covered in blood, bruises, and grime. Yet her concern moved me. I will be once your highness gets us back to the celestial kingdom. Princess Feng Mei's smile faltered as she glanced at Li Wei. His expression was inscrutable, but his eyes were deep pools which threatened to drown me if I stared into them for too long. Her gaze fell upon the sky dropped tassel by his waist. She tilted her head towards its twin which dangled from my belt, the gem clear once more. A matched pair. Her voice was soft as a breeze in a meadow. An, ex an inexplicable urge to explain gripped me, even though she had not asked. A gift of friendship, I said. She did not respond, falling silent as Li Wei rose and offered me his hand. I grasped it as I rocked unsteadily to my feet, fighting the urge to clutch him tighter, to revel in the feeling of his skin against mine. When he helped Princess Feng Mei up, I hurried ahead of them. I did not want to intrude, nor was I strong enough to withstand seeing his arm wrapped protectively around her shoulders. Not when my heart was still raw after all we had been through. After everything I had confessed to both myself and him. Heading north, I led the way through the trees beyond the forest toward the scent of lush grass and wild flowers. I inhaled deeply, relishing the freshness of the air. Princess Feng Mei's magic surged forth, summoning a large cloud which swooped down before us. I climbed upon it, eager to leave this graveyard of broken dreams. Now that it was over, pity sparked in me at the thought of Lady Hualing's fate, a tragic end to such an illustrious immortal. I recalled my mother, too, pining away at for my father, living half her life in shadow, buried in memories and regret. No, I would not choose as they had done. I would not yearn after what had been lost, impossible to regain. I would look to the days ahead, to the happiness which awaited me there. If only I were brave and steadfast enough to reach for it.